and happy weekend to our viewing audience and welcome to a special weekend edition of Meek Pro Media Special Edition News. Of course, this is the founder and executive producer, Miko Evans, coming at you once again with another uh, new episode of community news and special interviews, letting you know everything that's going on in our LGBTQ plus community. Uh, locally, nationally, and internationally. Once again, for more information about our previously broadcast shows, please not only subscribe to this channel so that you can stay tuned with the latest in our episodes, but also go to the podcast version, uh, the audio version of our shows via Mixcloud and Soundcloud. All of that information should be located at the bottom of your screen. Yes, we're still in the midst of our 15th anniversary in media, and we're also still in the midst of our 20th conceptual anniversary of our company, you know, the, the, the entire vision of the world's first LGBTQ exclusive talent agency and production company. I am so excited. Uh, you know, I always got to bring special guests on our show. I'm very excited to have on our show someone who I've always admired. Uh, I remember when I first met him and saw what he was doing in the community with his uh, organization. Um, and I remember the first time I had a chance to attend his uh, signature event, which is his annual conference. And we're going to talk about that, uh, the National Trans Health Conference. We want to talk about that uh, later on in our show. But I have with me, I have with me on the show, so excited to have him, uh, the founder and executive director of Someone Cares of Atlanta Incorporated. <laughs> Brother Ronnie Bass is on the line on the show. Let me make sure he's unmuted. Are you already unmuted, brother? Good morning. Yes, I've been here and unmuted me, so, <laughs> so you can hear me clearly. Good morning. How are you? All is well, brother. I am so glad that you are here, man. Thank you, and welcome to the show. Yes, thank you for all that you do. I, I appreciate it. I could not go without it. Be, having you a part of the event, and even because you're such a well-known producer here in Atlanta, that I just had to have you a part of our conference. So thank you for reaching out to me and uh, allowing us, allowing you to be a part of us. Yes, thank you so much for the <laughs> invitation. Uh, like I said, this is my first time participating fully mm -hmm. in the conference because I know my first. Um, exposure to the uh conference event was uh some years ago and uh i just came in i think on that one but particular uh the few hours just to do media coverage and stuff like that because i was in the midst y'all always have the conference during my birthday <laughs> <laughs> my birthday is november 15th but thank you for your sacrifice <laughs> you <know? laughs> so i said okay you know and normally depending on how my birthday falls <laughs> That's, you know, you know, that uh, always determine, you know, if I can participate or not. But this time I said, yeah, my birthday is falling in the middle of the week. So I'm I, like I said, I'm going to be working anyway during the day. So uh, this gives me the opportunity during the day to actually spend time with you all, because even though oh, I got some uh, I got some birthday celebration sh shenanigans going on <laughs> in the evening, in the evening. Uh, okay. I, yeah, I do have some things going on in the evening and stuff like that, but uh, it still will give me the opportunity to celebrate uh, with you all during the daytime, uh, during, the during daytime. business hours. So that's going to be very exciting. So before we get into the conference, mm -hmm. tell us a little bit uh, about your background, Ronnie, uh, where you hail from, uh, how long you've been in Atlanta, uh, if you're not born and raised, and, uh, you know, the, the actual, you know, vision and creation of someone care. So let's start from there. Okay. Um, well, I was born in Durham, North Carolina. I won't give the year, <laughs> but I was born in North, North Carolina. So, and then I uh, moved to at uh, Jacksonville, Florida, um, where the Lord led me to come upon this agency called River Region Human Services. And they were doing HIV prevention at that time. You know, Jacksonville was like the top three in HIV cases. And, you know, people were still at that rate of dying. Um, so God had given me a vision at that time to do some stuff within the LGBT community because it wasn't a lot do being done here. Um, so with that vision, I took it, brought it to Atlanta. You know, I went back and finished college and everything in North Carolina Central University. And I came back in Atlanta, um, moved back to Atlanta because I was there before in 1998. Mm -hmm. uh, and so from there, it just took off. Um, 
I got involved in the Atlanta community, the Ryan White, you know, um, the HIV committee, the state um, councils and stuff. So, and I grew, kept in meeting people, introducing my people self to uh, community-based organizations and um, got more involved in the Atlanta uh, activism. But um, from there, we, uh, Someone Cares was, is now based in Marietta, Georgia. Um, that's where we've been for the last 20 some years. Um, we are now 27 years uh, being established. So in, we're in Marietta, Georgia. We also have a, a location in uh, Jackson, in, in Fulton County on Cascade Road. Mm -hmm. um, the vision is to help people, to empower them, to have better, healthy outcomes um, in their life. Uh, along with their HIV and STD, and uh, we do primary care. Um, so we have we're like a one stop shop for the LGBT community, but we also do general community uh, community too. We have a behavioral health um, team um, um, led by Dr. Asia Dickerson. We have a primary care team, which is our medical director, Dr. Earl Joyner. Um, we do prevention and outreach to the LGBT community and the, and the community of Atlanta uh, as a whole. Um, we do testing and counseling. We have an opioid program. Uh, we can just have a array of things. So we're like a one-stop shop um, here in Atlanta, metropolitan area. How, um, because one of the things I've noticed, how, you know, about Someone Cares and how I was introduced to the organization is that you all had a strong uh, trans following as well as right. a, a strong <clears throat> trans supportive, um, right. you know, um, following as well. And that's one of the reasons why I thought that really someone cares was actually a, you know, trans focused organization. So um, now that I know that the full vision was to help the entire LGBTQ plus community, you know, that gives me gives me a whole different perspective about the community. But what inspired you all with this particular uh, season right now? What inspired you all to really focus on the trans community? How did that come about? Well, in 2008, we were funded, we were uh, one of, we were the only organization in the state of Georgia funded for to do prevention and education to the transgender community. Um, but even through our work throughout the 27 years, we've always worked with the trans community in providing HIV testing and other resources from the agency, but we state funded in 2008. So we've been there, we've made a platform um, and really, really have been um, involved with trans life. There's a, you know, there's, they are heavily hit. They're one of the highest populations that are, have HIV rates and STD rates here in Atlanta and even across the country. So we are very concerned about that population. And um, 2008, I also met Dee Dee Shamley. Uh, she is a blessing here in Atlanta metropolitan area. Um, she worked with me. We worked side by side to, she kind of educated me more of the trans community. Some of their plights that they're having, it's not only just let's give them an HIV test, they need housing, food, jobs. I mean, all these things are, are, are something that concerns of the community other than let me get an HIV test. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of where it started, um, getting involved in the trans community. And that was that was a wonderful start because for those people that know, um, you know, Sister Dee Dee Chambly is yeah. the goat. <laughs> the goat too. She's the, she's the godmother uh, of the trans movement here in Atlanta. You know, yeah. uh, she's the first to even create a trans nonprofit. So right. she's the first right. to do that. Yes, and, uh, she is, and we are awarding her this year. She's out. She's getting our Trailblazer Award this year, uh, Dee Dee Chambly. Awesome, At awesome. Uh, it's going to be very exciting to see that, as well as um, um, our uh, nonprofit organization, History of Black Gay America, Inc., you know, she, mm -hmm. uh, the Gender, Inc., was yeah. the first to be inducted, was the first uh, uh, two uh, groups to be inducted 
uh, when we had the first two groups of uh, sets of people to be inducted into our Hall of Fame and Justice uh, in uh, ceremony. And uh, so uh, Dee Dee Chambly and Legenda E was one of the first uh, group of people, I mean, within that group of people to be inducted into our Hall of Fame. So uh, shouts out to Dee Dee Chambly and Legenda yes, E. Congratulations yes, yes. I remember going to the uh, state um, meetings each year, or each month, they had them every month, and did he fought to have name um, recognition on forms, um, identity markers on forms with the CDC. She is that person. She is that go-to person in the trans community. So, yes, we love her to death. Yeah, or to and I'm glad that she's uh, like, finally getting her flowers while she's Yes, still while she's mm -hmm. And a lot of people didn't realize that, you know, how... She has impacted the, the Atlanta community with the, as far as the trend. She's a mother, she's a wife, you know, she's a sister. She's been so involved and even having health issues of her own, she still stayed on the battlefield. Absolutely. Sure that the trans community get what they need. You know, um, yeah, it's just it's so beautiful when we are, are able to give uh, our pioneers, our legends and our elders you know, mm -hmm. the flowers and the recognition while they live, you know what I'm saying, while they are still actually alive and stuff, because, you know, uh, we haven't, we don't do that enough. No, and, we don't. We uh, don't. Especially in the midst of a lot of revisionist history, you know what I'm saying? You know, a lot of our uh, history as it relates to our community was already either uh, not told to us or either hidden. Hidden. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You know, right. uh, on purpose so that we won't right. you know, be able to walk in, you know, with pride and with dignity, you know what I'm saying? And with respect as it relates to who we right. are in this community. So I'm very, very excited, you know, to see what's in store uh, for the conference. Let's also talk about um, some of the other components of someone cares. Cause I know you all mentioned that y'all do STD testing, mm -hmm. uh, you know, not just HIV testing, but also other STI other STDs, and STDs, and yeah. stuff like that, but y'all also provide other supportive services. Uh, cause I think y'all also mentioned providing, um, you know, counseling, uh, which also includes mental health counseling. Mental health, so we don't deal not, we really don't, especially in communities of color, we don't really deal with mental health yeah. like we should. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, tell us a little bit more about y'all's angle and approach to that. Right. So over the 27 years, you kind of understand, understand the community and what causes the HIV rate to increase. I mean, we're looking at people who have been traumatized throughout their life. They've been ostracized, you know, the churches, if it's not their family, you know, these individuals are, 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 are have been affected mentally. You know, if not physically, and some doing survival sex, you know, just to stay alive. Mm -hmm. So that's why we have our mental health program and substance abuse program to address those things. What led you to being on the streets, um, selling your bodies to 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 survive? Um, what's going on with you now that we can address some of those issues so we can get your help, you know, whether you need medication, mental health medication, substance abuse, we have a substance abuse program, alcohol, uh, drug. Uh, uh, we have an opioid program I've mentioned earlier for those uh, individuals that are opioid. And these programs are free. You know, we're funded mm -hmm. to the state to provide these programs to the community. And as I said, we have a, um, we have, um, other, my, I'm sorry, my phone threw me off. We have a primary care. We don't just do HIV and STD. We have a primary care. We're funded through Ron White, where we have a primary care. We have a doctor. We have a nurse practitioners. We have nurses. All this uh, uh, faculty to be able to serve the community. You know, um, God just put it together. That's all I can say. He just wow. put it together and we are here to serve the community. Like I said, we don't just serve LGBT. We're here to serve, serve everyone. Angela population. We did a, a, a big event yesterday downtown with homeless population. We mm -hmm. tested and screened and provided service to over 65 individuals. So we're like, and we have a mobile unit, you know, that a medical mobile clinic would mm -hmm. provide the same services that we provide in-house. We are meeting people where they are. You know, uh, it, people don't realize, you know, some of these agencies, they're not just sitting there 
waiting, oh, well, let me go to someone cares today to just sit around and get this education. Some people, you have to meet them where they are mm -hmm. because they have challenges in their life. So we want to be able to meet them where they are, provide them good quality service, and then eventually they you get them to the into the facility, especially coming to the, the uh, uh, substance abuse uh, support groups and stuff like that. So, you know, it's, it's all about meeting people where they are. Well, let's get into your personal testimony. Um, when did you come to the awareness uh, and come into the knowledge of your true self, of your sexual identity? Because, of course, you know, I think we may be in the same age bracket. Uh, no, you're younger. <laughs> So you say. <laughs> so you say. <laughs> but uh, still, though, not too far from each other, because um, we grew up during a time where mm. it wasn't safe. Right. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't welcomed, and it also wasn't safe right. to walk in our authenticity. So from, because uh, I know you grew up in the South, in the Confederate oh. South, like I did. Yes. Well. You know what I'm saying? You just you just was on the Carolina end. I was in Georgia. So, um <laughs> Tell us a little bit about your testimony as far as how was you able to overcome, uh, you know, your, you know, as I say, you're coming in two experience. I, I don't say coming out anymore. I said you're coming in two experience. Uh, you know, when did you realize that you was different and how difficult it was for you? Uh, oh, it was very out. difficult. I mean, I, from, from where I could uh, remember as a child, I've always been called gay or been, called feminine or sissy, bagot, well, and some of those, and it just carried throughout my life until I got to high school and then I graduated. But through even maneuvering as a gay male through grade school, middle school, and high school, mm -hmm. you're talking about trauma. Mm -hmm. <laughs> my daily job wasn't to learn school. It was how am I going to maneuver through this life every day with these people that are you know their kids they're not sensitive to your your concerns or what you may be going through and i had the type of parents i had two parents they were they, they were strict parents we were church people and um i remember having a conversation with my father uh one time and he was he just pulled me to the side he said you know something gay people are sick and you are not sick that's the only conversation I had with my father about being gay. He had just pulled me aside. I don't know. I think some a mailman in the community or something said, oh, I saw your son. Yes, but he had that come. But that was it. But my family, I was blessed to come from a family that loved me. Mm. Parents loved me. Their knowledge of gayness was more of seeing a man and, you know, dressed as a woman. That's what they, you know, attributed what gayness is mm -hmm. and i guess they didn't want me to be put in that category you know mm -hmm. these are older people my dad be 90 in december you know so they you know they did what they could but they were very supportive i never other than, like i said that was the only company now my oldest brother he was from the era where they call him out da, 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 da. you this i heard this you know that type of stuff but i made it through god with god um, helping me through and with a solid foundation as a family, I wasn't the ones that went out in the street and did a lot. I was more in the house or my brother and I were, you know, so, um, but they were supportive, but it was challenging even, but when I got to high school, I had those challenges, you know, guys don't want to be around you, see you, call you while you wait, while you're not in public with them. So, mm -hmm. you, know, that, 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 you know how it goes. Mm -hmm. But when I got in college, it was more like, Okay, I'm growing up now. Mm -hmm. And then once I got my own apartment and cars, it was like that was out of the one. Gay being called gay was the last thing on my mind. But it was paying my bills, staying stable, mm -hmm. you know, living life, and being responsible person. Being gay was still <laughs> on the list, you know. So, um, but it was it was very challenging. I mean, because kids and individuals they 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 could be very cruel. And they learned that, uh, unfortunately, they learned that cruelty, uh, they, they say charity starts in the home. Oh, a lot right. of them learned that cruelty from home. 
uh, from what they saw their parents do, their and they parents also did. learned it from uh, from the environment. Because unfortunately, right. many of us, I mean, as as much as we try to deny it, we're all products of our own environment. And That's so, true. Um, you know, so these are a lot of the things that we had to navigate. And mm -hmm. also what I was telling some uh, members from the younger generation about those of us, uh, either whether you're from the baby boom generation or from my generation, Generation mm -hmm. X, I said, you know, we are now, those of us who are uh, spiritually conscious now and uh, or divine consciousness now, mm -hmm. we are having to really purge, cleanse, and unlearn a lot of the stuff that was forced down our throats right that we thought was for us but come to find out it was never for us right you know and so uh and, and it took us some time it took it us took some, us time some time to heal and, and many of us are still healing still healing yeah yeah that was <laughs> people, oh people are just still is now like you know you see the young people coming out early and you know it's a little bit more accepting you know because they got the prom queen the bum you know and they went into pageants and stuff you know so um it's it's a little bit easier now but it was challenging growing up the, the, you gonna start like i said you gonna start dating myself but the 70s and 80s those are very hard years um and i you know i still have one or two scars from those years but mm -hmm. i made it and like you said the spiritual background i trust in god i believed he will bring me through and i think i kept their spiritual connection until today and that's why how someone cares was formed because someone cares i had no knowledge before i got the river region human services i had no knowledge about being i was like i said i was a home person so going out to the clubs and doing all that i didn't know i didn't i, didn't, I wasn't part of that mm -hmm. but god showed me when i got to jacksonville florida he came and and, and started someone cares that's why i said somehow i got on with river region human services i saw a need kept working i saw a purpose kept working god gave me a vision kept working and someone cares is someone cares today that's how someone cares got to be someone cares and i thank god for it you know what uh did you always know that you was going to work in uh human services did you always know that you was going to work in uh in the healthcare industry or doing social work or have or doctors that you going to do that or, no or have doctors under me now that I, i'm over no <laughs> that was not the vision my college degree my undergrad is in textiles and apparel you know what people you know we want to be fashion models and yeah. i was like, you know, I was halfway looking, you know, saying, so, you know, I could dress a little bit. So that's where we lead to. You know, I wanted to be, what the hell, I was sucked at sewing, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Design, nothing. But I did win the contest in college. Oh, no, you know, about the dress I designed and everything. But that that was where I was heading, you know. But then God chose a different direction. I mean, he kind of opened my eyes and he prepared me for this moment. And, um, I'm here. I'm here by the grace of God because I, once I got off on my own, I didn't say I was perfect, <laughs> you know, because mm -hmm. I did some things that I should be HIV positive at this point in my life. I'm just going to be honest with you because people got to hear this. I was, I was not perfect. I mean, I did the unprotected things. I did the, you know, whatever it is. To mm -hmm. expose yourself to HIV. Mm -hmm. Individuals, you, you have a conversation, you know, they always say, have a conversation with your with your partner about HIV. You talk to them the year saying, um, well, you know, I just took a test last week and I'm negative. How about you? Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm negative too. And you find out later, you know, that they are HIV positive. But God kept me, and, 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 and I'm not saying I'm boasting or proud about it, but I'm just saying that I went through that to be a, and and to be an advocate of something that someone hasn't been directly affected by, mm -hmm. it's it's it had to be a call from God to get me into this because I could it, having a nonprofit is not easy. Yeah. I think I made it look easy, and I think I still make it look easy because I post the work that we're doing in the community, and I try to hire from the community and work with the community, and but it's not easy. And to be challenged by current staff, past staff, you know, they don't get the vision. They're more looking at 
what have, I can get. Yeah, what I can get. And they don't mm -hmm. realize it's a greater purpose than that. Mm -hmm. It's a greater purpose than someone cares. You don't know how many individuals, thousands of individuals. I remember they had, uh, they used to have Black Pride and, and over at uh, Mix or, or let's say, Club that means we out there, I'm out there on the streets. And I tell my staff, you're not doing anything I wouldn't be, I, that I don't do. Mm -hmm. Because I was out there with the condoms on the back, you know, handing out safer sex kits and these, you know, black, black prides and, and, and at the clubs and stuff. I started testing in the clubs. And stuff. I, when I say I, I mean myself physically in these bars and clubs and bathrooms and different places where they started giving me a room when I came, would come to the club to do this testing and stuff. So that's how passionate what, that I was about, or I am about HIV and AIDS, especially in the LGBT community. Wow, wow. It's Thank not easy. It's, 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 it's not easy. And like I said, I may have um, shows some people, and especially being a Black mm -hmm. individual or company, you know, yeah. and you want to do right by your community, but you, you hire your community, they don't do right by you. And that's where I feel kind of slighted or something because I'm like, okay, I'm, you know, hiring you, giving you this opportunity to, you know, to be a part of this great mission and vision of the company. And it's, it's, it's like I said, they're, they're more after what they can get than, than the vision. So, but I thank God that we're still here. I, you know what, I think that comes with the territory because I can relate to that. And uh, even with me, uh, being a for-profit uh, company, but with a community advocacy, uh, you know, intention. And so even with me, you know, I had to realize that some people are only going to be a part of this because like you are means to an end right. uh, to a lot of other people, but you mm. cannot let that deter you from your mission right. because no. everybody, everybody that start with you ain't going to end with you. Right, right, right. You know that is so true. Yeah, and everybody's can... not going where you're going because it's yeah. like you, know, and you have to realize that that yeah that there are going to be some that's going to fall by the wayside, but uh, that cannot deter you from your destiny and your mission and purpose that the divine sent you here to uh, right. manifest. You know, right, right. Yeah. And I tell people, someone, someone cares was not formed by Ronnie Bass. It was called. I was called. By God, and I know it. I was called by God, and this is and this agency has helped so many over the years that um, someone cares is not going anywhere. And you know, those who are out there are out to do what whatever they want to do with someone cares. Try your best. It's not, <laughs> you're not going nowhere. But at the same time, Miko, I want to give honor to one of the other um, leaders in the Atlanta metropolitan uh, area. It's Rudy Carnes with yes. NAESM. I mean, yes. he's another black brother who who has really stuck in there and, and really provided great services to the to the LGBT, especially the African American MSM community. Yes, he was the first to do it. He was the first to do it. He was the first to do it. You know, and for I, people you know, of color, for people of color, he was the first to do it. Rudy Carnes, and you can say what you want about him, but he is he had to have that tenacity or the strength to keep going because like they target me and people tear down me and look to tear down an agency that is supporting a community of need. I mean, we're in the community, we're black. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not a white organization with a black front, you know, got somebody out there black. We're in that community, from that community, know that community, mm -hmm. you know. And I praise him for the years that he, I know now, what he went through mm. or even going because people i don't i just don't know people they don't get the bigger picture mm -hmm. you know, their brother their sister their aunt their uncle have been infected affected by hiv and aids so mm -hmm. you know so they don't see that as a health issue service that needs to be addressed mm -hmm. it's more like I ain't got it. I ain't gonna worry about it. Or I got it. I don't care. I just, mm -hmm. You know, but you, you know, <laughs> there's medicines and and different um, therapies that people are living longer now. It's not a death sentence. It's you know, that's out the window. You know, nobody dies nowadays unless they really don't want to access service. 
which debt come what comes what cr creates that when they don't want to access service is stigma. Mm -hmm. Stigma is still real. My aunt worked at the public health department in this small town that I live in. So I'm not going to go down there because she's going to know all my records. She's going to know all my business and she's going to tell the rest of the family. Mm -hmm. So if I don't and, take... Uh, and I think that's another <laughs> reason why people don't... Um, when it comes to even being tested, a lot of the reason why people don't get tested frequently, because once again, it's not just stigma. It's also, uh, can I trust you? You know, can I trust you? information yeah. going to be private. You know, are you going to use this to, uh, to, uh, to, and use all this information, use it against me, you know what I'm saying? Right. To either destroy me or whatever. And so, yeah, mm -hmm. people have, you know, you gotta be careful when it comes to that, you know, um, your personal information and stuff. Right. So mm -hmm. it's, it's, I'm grateful that you all have been out in the community long enough you know, to be able to, you know, know what the pitfalls are and <coughs> to avoid that stuff. So, yeah, mm -hmm. this is a great way to end the first half. Let's uh, okay. let's take our commercial, only commercial break that we have on this show. And when we come back, we're going to get into the vision behind the National Trans Health Conference. That's the, one of the signature events, actually the main signature event uh, for Someone Cares of Atlanta. And yes. uh, we still have Brother Ronnie Bass on the show. Once again, and uh, so stay tuned, you all. We'll be right back after this brief break. <laughs> You're tuned in to Meek Productions syndicated shows. Don't go anywhere. We do have more in store. Hey there, this is George Carlton, president of the Metro Atlanta Association of Professionals. Are you looking to expand your business, seeking employment connections, or want to grow your professional network but don't love traditional networking? The map is right for you. As Atlanta's first LGBTQ plus business association, we pioneered partnerships and networking with Atlanta's leading change makers to help you connect authentically, in person and online, with people from diverse industries, identities, and histories. For more information about membership and being part of our legacy, visit our website at www.maapatl.org. Once again, that's mapatl.org. We look forward to connecting with you real soon. Meek Productions is proud to be an official media partner for this organization. Hello, everyone. This is Chris Lugo, Executive Director of the Out Georgia Business Alliance, Georgia's only Chamber of Commerce serving the LGBTQ plus community and our allies. Formerly known as the Atlantic Gay and Lesbian Chamber of Commerce, Out Georgia serves the community by advocating for the most inclusive and equitable business environment, providing support and resources to fuel economic growth, and driving meaningful community connections and impact across the state of Georgia. For more information about membership and the legacy of our organization, please visit outgeorgia.org. Once again, that is outgeorgia.org. We look forward to serving and networking with you soon. Meek Productions is proud to be an official media partner for this organization. Jim Farmer, Festival Director of Out on the Film. Since 1987, Out on the Film has been dedicated to supporting the exhibition of LGBT film and video art forms with top-rated films, intimate settings, audience participation, and special celebrity events, which gives moviegoers and sponsors a way to connect and extend a 90-minute film into a lasting relationship. For more information about film submission, the history of the festival, and how to donate or sponsor, please visit outonfilm.org. That's outonfilm.org. Meek Productions is proud to be an official media partner for this organization.
And we are back with the last half of our new episode of Meek Pro Media Special Edition News. We're still in the midst of our 15th anniversary season. And once again, for more information, just check out all of the information that's located at the bottom of your screen. We are on all social media outlets at Meek Productions, so check us out at your earliest convenience. We still have with us uh, the founder of Someone Cares of Atlanta Incorporated, Brother Ronnie Bass. You still with us? I'm sitting here. I am blessed to be here. <laughs> yes, what to say? You're yet holding on. I'm yet holding on. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get into uh, the official signature event of Someone Cares of Atlanta Incorporated, uh, the National Trans Health Conference, which is in its sixth season uh, of existence, that's going to be held. Uh, this year, actually, uh, is coming up. It's going to be held November the 16th through the 18th. Going to start the day after my birthday. Oh, yes. 15th, yes. That's right. Yes. Uh, yes, it's going to start the day after my birthday. So it's going to be uh, November 16th through the 18th. It's going to be held at the Cortland Grand Hotel, which is at uh, 165 Cortland Avenue, downtown uh, Atlanta, Georgia, uh, 30303. All of that information is located at the bottom of your screen. So don't forget to register. If you want more information, go online at www.s1catl.org. And once again, that information is located at the bottom of your screen. Ronnie, let's talk about the, uh, inspiration behind creating, uh, a national trans health conference. Uh, the talk, talk to me about the inspiration. What led to this? Well, what led to this was, you know, in our 27 years, we understand that we were listening to the community, the trans community, what their needs are, what, they, what they're not, um, their trials and tribulations as far as living just day to day. So we wanted to, but when you're, when you're just talking to each other, you, nothing is happening. You know what I'm saying? And we're all in a room just talking about, this. oh, they didn't do this and they didn't do that. But that's not getting out to the world, to the public, the people that really uh, provide service on a day-to-day -day basis to the trans population. So that's where it started from. It said, like, let's educate the community. Let's get some professionals in here. Well, they're the doctors, social workers, you know, the ones that are down at the public health department, because that's where the only place, because we don't have a job, so then we got to go down there to the public health department. So let's just start with the front desk person. She needs to be at the conference because if I look, if I'm dressed as a female woman and you see that and you call me, sir, that's a problem. Mm -hmm. And here's the public health department. It's the only place that I can go because I don't have insurance. I have no job. I don't have any money. So where do I go? Mm -hmm. But I don't want to go there because they don't treat me with respect. Mm -hmm. so, and that's with other professions, too. So we wanted to make sure we were educating the community outside of the trans community. We want the trans population to, a trans population to be there to assist in educating because we have workshops around, you know, interaction between social workers and doctors and lawyers, you know, on how to address, especially when it comes to pronouns, providing respect mm -hmm. you know treat me with respect mm -hmm. you know um without having any biases i just love you know i'm the front desk person i just love holy Ch tabernacle baptist jesus christ church <laughs> <on Friday>. <laughs> <laughs> you know and the pastor that condemned all the alphabets hljbt iq all of them. So now here I have to work at the public health department as a front desk person. And here you see someone who you think and recognize a trans person and you still go try to treat them. You know, you can't, you know, it's, we all, so that's where the, where the conference came from. It's trying to educate. It's not necessarily trying to educate the trans community. It's trying to educate those that are outside of the trans community that provide services each day to these individuals. To wow. Buy, to educate them on how to respect them. That's all it is. It's just simple. It's nothing hard. It's just simple. Give me respect like I give you respect. And it's also an opportunity for uh, other members uh, in the um, community that support the trans community and also other trans right. people that <clears throat> work in right. advocacy to actually come together to network, to share right. resources, right. Um, you know, and so, to actually, you know, support each other as well. Right. That's a platform. Them. We have different workshops that 
Also, as you speak, we you know, have a trans platform network panel that's going to be going on where they're talking amongst each other, the community-based organizations, the trans-serving organizations that are out there, that they can network and provide services to, you know, what someone cares not doing, maybe positive impact or NASM or Aid Atlanta. You know, this is time to kind of network because it's not that much um, resources, and I say resources because individual um, start programs, but you can't run a program without finance. Mm -hmm. Let's be honest. Someone cares can't run. We can't just a rat without having finance to purchase those kids, to follow up on that individual, giving results back. If they come back positive, we have a doctor to see them. You know, it takes finance. So yeah. that's what the conference is all like I said. And we're offering CEUs to those individuals that are, you know, they're seeking um, CEUs that are in a professional realm, like social workers, teachers, or whatever. We're offering CEUs so that give, they get a credit also on top of learning about the trans community. Awesome. Um, besides, I know you mentioned one of the uh, highlights of the actual conference where you are uh, this year, you all are going to be uh, officially honoring uh, the godmother, the GOAT. God, yes. Uh, <laughs> yes, Sister Dee Dee Yes, uh, yes I know that's but... one of the main highlights of the uh, this right. year's conference. Uh, what are some of the other highlights that people can expect at uh, this year's uh, National Trans Health Conference? Because uh, I think, I know, I think on the first night, there's going to be, you know, uh, the reception. Right, it's going to be the reception, and we have the stars of the century. Uh, they have been a good go-to for us. They have, they perform, I mean, breathtaking shows. I mean, mm -hmm. they are so professional, and there's, the performance is so beautiful. So I'm asking everybody to come out to celebrate them on the first night. That's part of the reception. You know, we have our little hors d'oeuvres. We're not trying to you know, get nobody belly for, but we're gonna have a little orders and, and and sit back and watch this beautiful show that they're gonna put on. And then Friday we have a full day uh workshops and then at the lunch um session we're gonna have that's where we'll be awarding this honorable Dee Dee Shambley mm -hmm. um at that lunch session and then you know through that day and then you know that evening we we gotta let people who's out of town can kind of you know, have the nightlife on Friday nights. And then we're going to end on Saturday morning with workshops up to noon. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we're, it's going to be exciting. Um, and we have people coming from all over the country coming. Um, they're excited. So we're excited. And um, it's going to be a great conference. Wow. that That's really going to be awesome. That's mm -hmm. really, really going to be awesome. I'm uh, very excited. I can't wait to uh you know experience that with you all because i know uh i think early that evening uh i'll have a chance to actually you know be a part of that and then later that evening i'm gonna be actually you know attending uh with the lgbt skate night uh oh, later no. that evening because you know i'm still going to be participating okay. you know the mind y'all always have the conference doing oh, my yeah. birthday oh, I know. <laughs> I know, I know. So I like say, so I'm gonna. We appreciate your sacrifice. Yeah. So like I said, you know, I'm gonna be. Uh, I, what I love about it is that you know people know that I'm a full time entrepreneur. So they what are. I love about it is that they know that when it comes to my birthday celebration, they know that they're gonna be expecting some business things going on, like business networking, you right, know, and right. stuff like that, as well as some social, personal things going on as well. So uh, they know they always put business first. So that's right. one of the reasons right. why I'm so excited that you all invited me to actually have a, a no. exhibit space there for the conference. So this is really it going to uh, not, be awesome. It could, it could not have went on without you. But like <laughs> I say, I follow you. I don't like everything. You don't see me clicking on everything, but I love it. You're in the community. Wow. You know, and you're a blessing to, you know, you're giving exposure to those, like I said, we here to educate people, not just the LGBT, but the people on the outside of the LGBT, to bring in respect and other resources to the community. Mm -hmm. And you do that, and I appreciate that. And I appreciate you too, because uh, seeing you all 
validates and confirms that there's enough room for everybody. Yeah. Uh, every uh, health organization doesn't <clears throat> yeah. have to do the same thing that everybody else does. Even though there's a lot of cross pollinization that may happen. Um, yeah. But what I love about each organization, someone cares, NASM, uh, Thrive, or, or all of them. What I love about each one of you all is that each one of you all have a niche market. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Y'all may share, y'all may be sort of like in the same industry, so to speak. Right. But what I love about each organization that each one of you all target each uh, a different market within the entire LGBTQ plus it, it's community. Right. And, uh, and, and, and that's what I love about that because there's no competition. And, right. Right. There there's is no competition. Uh, you know, I, I love that. I love that. <laughs> but you and know something? Really, yeah, go ahead. No, and, and that's good. And 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 I praise those um organizations of color because we do work with uh Australia. She has a, a Latino organization. You know, yes, my girl, yes. yes. Yes, yes, yes. So we're kind of reaching out. We have a person that reaches out to each organization and say, Hey, you need this. We can get you that. You got that. We can get you that. But it's all working together. But we have to be mindful that the funding resources starts to, to make it kind of messy mm -hmm. because there's agencies that follow the trend of funding. Mm -hmm. They start off as I'm a women woman's activist or Mm. Feminine, da 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 da, da. and if they get a good grant right next to you know they they you know they servicing roaches because it's hundred million dollar in roaches so they gonna start adding roaches to the to their to their mission which was women mm -hmm. <laughs> they you know they doing roaches now because that's what <laughs> money so, and not really knowing the community and that's when they go and hire people of the community that might not even be accepted in the community. Mm -hmm. you you know what I'm saying in so other I, words what, what you really yeah I like the uh, what you're really saying because what uh -huh. you're saying is that there are a lot of people that's in this industry that's not really on the level that's not on the level because they don't have the knowledge of the community mm -hmm. and then that then they like I say they they work these grants they get the funding and then they hire someone because they say I'm gay or say I'm trans and they might not even have the inroads into the community to really be effective. Everybody yeah. that's in the community is not necessarily for the community. For the community. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. All right, mm -hmm. there you got it. That's but confirmation anyway, that, and validation. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So back to the conference. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to get you off, but you know I can start running my mouth. Uh -uh, that's what I'm saying. See, see, that's why. <laughs> That's why, that's, that's why we brought you on the show because like I said, we deal with real issues here. Yeah, you know real issues. Mean? Let's put it on the table. Let's, you know, in this year's uh, conference's challenge, we have to dig deep in our own personal finances to make this thing happen. But it, I wanted it to happen. God wanted it to happen and it's needed. If we can get one social worker, if we can get one doctor, we can get one nurse to be able to go into the room with a trans individual, and give them the respect that they deserve without mm -hmm. calling them pronouns, without, you know, look at them strange or you know, anything, or not even knowing why they are maybe doing commercial sex work. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They're not just out there sleeping around people because they want to. This is about because they may have to. This is my, this is the only way I make my money is how I buy me some, a loaf of bread, mm -hmm. you know? But I might have picked up an STD along the way. You know because they're the, uh, because that's that's one of the reasons why it's very important that we have justice in the workplace, and mm. uh, that's another reason why it's very important for us to support entrepreneurship and small yeah. business. Because yeah. at the right. end of the day, um, there needs to be more safe spaces created for people created. to uh, operate in their authenticity to where right. they can make right. money, being right. exactly who they are. So uh, once again, like I said, uh, Ronnie, thank you so much for Ooh. everything that you do. Thank you so much for um, the vision and for honoring and manifesting what the divine source put in your spirit. Yes, yes, yes. I'm just being obedient. That's why I tell people. Yeah. I am being obedient. And when 
you don't understand me and my mission, you as an employee or someone standing on the outside might not know why I do what I do or how I even got what I got. Mm -hmm. It was God. Mm -hmm. And if when you don't understand that, that's when you, we're going to go in a whole other, I'm going down a whole <laughs> other road. Let me stop. Because all I can say, the devil is busy. Oh, boy. Nope. Yeah, but, but see, the thing is, is that we don't we don't let toxic forces have the victory because right. they don't have right. the power. Right, because they do what they every day. They have, I was listening to something the other day. They were talking about legions. You know, the devil have legions. They mm. are organized. Mm -hmm. And they're there to try to bring you down. Mm -hmm. But as long as you know God, mm -hmm. got your back. <laughs> you need the faith. <laughs> Hallelujah. He's going he's gonna to bring us through. Yeah. And I thank you. Like I said, I really appreciate you at, um, having come, reaching out to me as I reached out to you because you could have said no. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's why I said thank you for being obedient. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, you know, uh, I, I, this is going to be awesome. You know, I'm, I'm going to be able to celebrate my birthday with you all uh, doing <laughs> business hours. And uh, I just have to get a little you. birthday cake or something for you while you're there. Hello, <laughs> hey, uh, talk about it. All right. To those of you who are viewing us right now, uh, if you would like to attend, if you're in the uh, Atlanta, Georgia area, or if you're actually coming in from out of town to attend the conference, be sure uh, to support uh, Someone Cares uh, next, uh, this coming uh, next uh, weekend. It's going to be like toward next weekend, uh, November the 16th through the 18th. All right. And it's going to be held at the Cortland Grand Hotel. All of that information should be located at the bottom of your screen. Don't forget to register online at www.s1catl.org. Once again, that information is located at the bottom of your screen. And uh, you can find out all of the information about their social media outlets and everything at the uh, link provided below. Uh, Ron, thank you so much once again. I love you. I appreciate you. Uh, grateful to the creator of the Omniverse for your existence and for your contribution uh, mm -hmm. to uh, our community and your contribution to the human family. Looking forward yes. to celebrating your sixth annual season of the conference on next week and weekend, all right? Yes, yes, yes. Come out, guys. And Migo, thank you. Thank you for this blessing. I, I really thank you. Uh, and we appreciate you, baby. And to those of you at our viewing audience, don't forget to check out our next new episode. We're very excited. Uh, we have some new guests uh, coming on the show because we're going to be ending 2023, our prowl season. We're going to be ending it with a bang. So stay tuned for our um, shows that we got before the Thanksgiving holiday and our actual uh, Christmas show and end of the year show. So we got some more in store. So until next time, y'all stay safe and take care. Thanks again, Ronnie. Thank you. Y'all take care. See you at the conference. <laughs>